All right, so this, this is probably the least practical talk of the day. This is all about clinical trial design and what the, the big trials that are out there for. But I, I do want you guys to think of it a little bit as an advertisement for some of these trials. Um, I think these are all NCI-led trials that can be opened uh, throughout the country, and so, uh, so th think of them. So I'll just begin by highlighting some of the, some of the data that, that guides what we do today, but it's hard to get excited about. Some of this is old data, so this is data from 2006, carboplatin, paclitaxel, BEV. Turns out that adding BEV makes carbotaxel better in terms of progression-free and overall survival. But those are, those are pretty hard to make out uh, differences. Uh, similarly, this trial, uh, worldwide trial, that compared gemcybine cisplatin to cisplatin pemetrexid, uh, this, you know, this is something that it was called a non-inferiority trial because neither drug is any good and neither drug really helped uh, and it didn't show a difference. So those two curves are right on top of each other. Um, and then if you, if you get really sophisticated and break it down by histology, you can find a, a sliver of a difference between these two combinations, uh, showing that gemcitabine cisplatin is inferior to cisplatin pemetrexid in patients with non-squamous histology lung cancer. And these, these are oldish data. Uh, but, you know, this is the, some of the most recent data, nesitumumab added to gemcybine cisplatin in squamous cell lung cancer. Uh, again, really very small difference in outcome for these patients. Um, and I think the, the message I take from these types of trials is that little progress is made, has been made by targeting non-small cell lung cancer in general. Uh, and, you know, you can almost say that about targeting individual histologies as well. And the only way forward has really been to evaluate drugs in subpopulations of non-small cell lung cancer. We think of lung cancer in 2015 as a um, s disease of subtypes. Uh, so this is the adenocarcinoma pie chart, which shows that about a quarter of patients have KRAS mutant lung cancer, a little less than a quarter have EGFR mutant lung cancer. And then there are a lot of slivers of the pie, BRAF mutant, ALK positive, uh, ROS1 positive, many of these that Alice will talk about in just a few minutes. And we, we think of this uh, as a pie, we think of this as, a, as di distinct disease subsets because of our experience with EGFR mutant lung cancer, where we know that if we treat patients with an EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor, we can see dramatic improvements in progression-free survival compared to platinum-based doublets. So this is, this is how we think of cancer today, lung cancer specifically, and this is how we're designing trials. So how do you... Um, how do you target this group of patients, and how do you target small populations? How do you do the trials? So there's kind of two different approaches. One is umbrella trial, and one is a basket trial. I'm not sure why there's a green bar over the basket. There's nothing obscene underneath that bar, if that's what you're wondering. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll go through examples of both these designs in just a second, uh, but just to say that a, an umbrella trial is really designed to allow a, a slot on the trial or an arm of the trial for all patients or, or almost all patients who get enrolled. Uh, you can evaluate many targets in one trial that way. There's a centralized screening method. It's really a, a great asset. But they're complicated. There's, it requires a lot of co cooperation of multiple sponsors and multiple drugs involved. It gets complicated. The, the other simpler version is the basket trial. Um, and I'll show you some schemas for these in a minute. Um, these basket trials really require you to find the, the sometimes rare patient uh, you can sometimes open a trial and never put a patient on it, uh, but they're simple trials, and they don't generally have a control arm, so we, we need to see striking results to feel like they're positive trials. This slide did say something. I don't remember what it said. But. Uh, so uh, this is an example of a basket study. This is from one of my colleagues at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering. We took patients uh, who had BRAF mutant cancers, and, um, and based upon their tumor histology or where the tumor uh, primary site was, we put them into one of a number of uh, little bins in this trial. And, and when you think of BRAF mutant cancers, the most common one, of course, is melanoma. There's no basket up here for melanoma because those, are, those patients are all on a different trial. But there are uh, baskets for some diseases that, that we care about, for instance, lung cancer, as well as uh, diseases where things are, are very uncommon. And, um, this doesn't even include a basket for some of the data I'm going to show you about, which is a disease called erdheim chester disease, which is an extraordinarily uncommon disease, but it has BRAF mutations in it. Uh, and this offers the opportunity to find those patients because you know they have BRAF mutations and you can put them in a bin. Um, 
So this was the trial design, and it led, led to you know, interesting findings like this. So this is vemurafenib in a BRAF mutant patient, patient with BRAF mutant lung cancer, dramatic response. This is that disease I was telling you about, erdheim chester disease, which is a disease of histiocytes, and this is a brain lesion in such a patient who was treated with vemurafenib, again, showing great responses. So this is the only, only the, you're not gonna run an umbrella trial for patients with erdheim chester disease. You're not gonna run really any trial at your institution for patients with erdheim chester disease. But if you had a trial that opens uh, and allows all patients with BRAF mutations to go on, this, you can find this patient and you have an opportunity to treat that patient. Uh, inspired by that vamurafenib data, we now have a, a neratinib basket trial, uh, which does the same sort of thing for HER2 as that other trial did for BRAF. So where are we going from here? Uh, we're going to NCI-sponsored efforts. Uh, so let's, let's talk about squamous cell lung cancer. I showed you the PI earlier for adenocarcinoma. This is the PI for squamous cell lung cancer. Lots of different genomic uh, aberrations. We don't always know what these mean. We don't know their clinical significance. So here's the trial to assess it. Remember when I said umbrella trials are complicated? This is, this is one of them. Uh, so you see at the top that it, tr it begins with biomarker profiling. So this is next generation sequencing as well as a variety of other um, tests that are done. And then patients are randomized based on the biomarker identified. So if a patient has a given mutation, biomarker A for instance, then they're put on a clinical trial that randomizes them to a targeted therapy or chemotherapy. And they do that with each individual biomarker. And if you don't have a biomarker with a, a, a trial, then you go up to the non-match arm, uh, which randomizes patient to chemotherapy or non-match, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, chemotherapy or to uh, an immunotherapy in the study. So this was uh, the master lung trial. This was in the, designed for squamous cell lung cancer. It, was, it took, uh, I can't imagine how long to get through the NCI process to get activated. Uh, and it was all wonderful, and then this data came out in March, uh, which showed that in patients with squamous cell lung cancer, previously treated with platinum-based doublet, that um, nivolumab is better than docetaxel. So this design, where you're randomizing patients to chemotherapy, aka docetaxel, doesn't make a lot of sense uh, if you know that that's inferior to nivolumab. So then you have to issue one of these, uh, summary of revisions and changes, and this is the first of likely many of these revisions and changes to, to switch things around. And I, Now this is the new version. Uh, this, this takes away uh, the randomization for the patients who don't have a match and allows patients with third line uh, squamous cell lung cancer who've previously had nivolumab. Um, and I'm told that a lot of these randomizations are actually gonna go away in the next version. Uh, and it will instead look for signals for some of these individual biomarkers. So that's the, uh, the, the, the lung map program, looking at squamous cell programs, or, or squamous cell lung cancer. This is the NCI match schema, which is a little different. Uh, it's it's kind of like, more like a basket than it is like the umbrella trial, because it doesn't aim to find something for everybody. Uh, what it does do is help to do genetic screening for a large population of patients, and then has some baskets uh, for individual mutations. And so I'll take you through a little bit of the detail of this. So patients are initially evaluated, uh, the patients who are eligible for this are anybody with previously treated cancer with progression. Any kind of cancer, uh, just previously treated, and no uh, curative options available. Patients get next generation sequencing. This is a, an ion torrent based assay with 200 to 300 genes. Uh, the NCI is constantly revising this panel, uh, but it does uh, identify a large number of, of patients, uh, or a large number of mutations, excuse me. They're also IHC and FISH if needed. So patients, after they get this um, done, are then allocated to one of uh, many arms. Uh, these are, uh, you can see the arm letters here, A through Q are the ones, or I'm sorry, A through V. Some of them are, uh, we skip, we don't, we know how to use the alphabet. It does go through A, B, C, but so not all the uh, letters are here because they are not activated yet. They'll be activated down the road. Um, I'm just gonna breeze through a few of these quickly. So this is the chrysotinib and alk uh, basket, I think, Alice might lead this basket. Um, what, what you'll notice is, you know, you guys know that crizotinib is effective in alpha-positive lung cancer. So this is not a trial to show that. So you see in the disease exclusions, uh, which is in the table here, that patients with lung cancer are excluded 
Uh, similarly, patients with anaplastic large cell lymphomas are also excluded. Those people have been evaluated in other trials, and this design is not uh, trying to find the common things. It's trying to find the uncommon things. So the, the odd patient with colorectal cancer who has an alpha rearrangement, this is the trial for them. And I think this is you know, a great example of how when many of us do next generation sequencing in practice, uh, we see things that are uncommon, and we'd love to know what to do with that, and this trial will help us figure that out. These are, these are all uh, individual arms of the trial, and this is another one. So this is trametinib in BRAF fusions or non-V600E, non-V600K BRAF mutations. So we know what to do B with V600E uh, melanoma. We know somewhat what to do with V600E lung cancer. Uh, but what about the other uh, thing, other mutations, the non-V600E? And this trial looks at the use of a MEK inhibitor trametinib for those patients. And then I'll just mention one more. Uh, AZD9291, this is a third generation EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor we'll hear a bit more about later on. Uh, this is a, a fabulous drug for patients with acquired resistance to uh, erlotinib or gefitinib uh, for those patients with T790M. And this trial looks for patients with T790M who don't have lung cancer, who have other diseases. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to, to find out how many patients uh, without lung cancer uh, can enroll in this trial. So just to highlight for a second, this is, you know, you're going to hear a lot about uh, this stuff in a second from Alice. Uh, I like to think of this trial that Alice uh, was involved with begin, beginning, beginning back in 2007, a trial that I've been involved with since 2007, kind of a sequential basket. This is the phase one trial of crizotinib. Uh, you know, it begins as all phase one trials do, dose evaluation, uh, and then had some expansion cohorts. And sort of one at a time, multiple expansion cohorts have been developed, multiple baskets uh, this is the first basket that was developed uh, for ALK-positive lung cancer, led to an FDA approval. Uh, this is a, a basket for ROS1-positive patients, all within the same trial. Uh, and uh, this uh, has, we've learned a lot from this. And now we have ongoing uh, baskets that continue as part of this phase one trial uh, to look at MET exon 14 skipping, uh, MET amplification, and, and other things as well. So I think that's kind of an interesting way to, to manage trial. So I'll, I'll close with talking about the Alchemist trial, uh, which uh, is a trial near and dear to Govindan's heart. Uh, and this is a trial of targeted therapies in the adjuvant setting. Uh, so this takes patients with non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, they undergo surgical resection, molecular evaluation, and then they're eligible for trials based upon their molecular abnormalities. So for patients with EGFR mutant lung cancer, uh, this is the... Uh, uh, on the far right column, um, then patients are randomized to either erlotinib or placebo. For patients with ALK-positive lung cancer, they're randomized to crizotinib or placebo. Uh, the primary endpoint of the trial is overall survival, and uh, they're looking for a hazard ratio of 0 0.67 to show that these drugs in the adjuvant setting uh, improve overall survival. Uh, one of the big challenges here is that the, you see the, the third arm is those patients without molecular alterations. Of course, you know the frequency of EGFR mutations in ALK-positive lung cancer means that those together account for about a quarter of patients, so three-quarters of patients won't have an arm to go on. Uh, and that's uh, in the process of being remedied uh, with this new arm for Alchemist, which uh, would, will be introduced over the course of the next few months, and this randomizes patients to either observation or nivolumab uh, as uh, adjuvant treatment for resected non-small cell lung cancer for those patients without ALK or uh, EGFR uh, mutations. So in conclusion, uh, some new trial designs allow for more rapid evaluation of drugs in small molecularly defined patient populations. Uh, the umbrellas and the baskets each have their limitations. Uh, Alchemist is certainly leading the way to effective adjuvant therapies and NCI MATCH is going to explore rare targets in a large number of patients. Uh, and I'll just mention that the, the lung map uh, or master protocol allows parallel evaluation of a number of targeted therapies, uh, but it has its complications as well. So I'll close there.